Welcome to the Encore, where we take a deeper dive into the past week's message. And Pastor Wes, welcome back. Most excellent to be back. Scott. Yeah, I had Most a couple uh, different weeks here where we shifted seats around, and it's always fun. But good to have you back. Feeling all right? I feel good. Yeah, cool. few uh, few little after uh, after effects. I might cough a little bit today, but I'm out of it. It's just uh, man, different little things just hang on for a minute. Yeah, cool. Well, in an effort to try, to, there you go. I know I had there. to. That wasn't Not, to do that just because I, I said that. I th- I said that because I knew I was going to do that. <laughs> now I think I'm good. All right. In an effort to try to not be super fluffy with our first few minutes, we're trying to answer yeah. questions, but people have asked questions about us, which is which is fun and fine and all good. We had one this week that we've touched on a little bit before. I don't Kidding. know how in-depth, but uh, somebody had asked about message preparation. Mm. So going through the whole week, there's this kind of a long-winded question. I'll, let, I'll throw it out there. You answer it, and then I'll answer it. Okay. Message preparation, let's just say you know your passage, and then you're going to figure out how do I want to preach this? What is my uh, routine for the week Yeah, leading up to how do I know that I'm ready for Saturday night? And how would we... There's other people out there that may be preparing messages, and I know yeah, we've had people are, come to us people, a lot, yeah. and they would say, what, what tips would you give on how to prepare? So... Go for it. What's your prep look like? What tips would you give? Mm-hmm. So I can talk about what mine looks like very quickly, but I will say at the get that uh, everybody's brain works different. Yes. So nobody's yes. going to, it's not one, there's not a formula that works Correct. that one size fits all. Your your The way your brain analyzes information and remembers things and organizes things is going to be wildly different yeah. from person to person. So whatever yep. you know works for you is fine. Uh, mine is that you said, let's say you know your passage. So let's assume we've gotten that. Yes, far. that's because hey, that could be a. Because a lot of times many, you come, that could be many hours. Well, for example, yesterday yeah. somebody said, I, Will you come and share with our team at yeah. a different church? Yeah. I had no request of a te- they, Whatever Anywhere. you want. They whatever said, Whatever you want. want. So then you got to like pray through what you feel God is leading mm-hmm. this particular group of people to be encouraged or challenged with. Different thing. So let's say you're that far. I read it through with no outside influence, meaning, mm-hmm. you know, let's say it's 10 verses. Yep. I read it through first a few times and, and just really slowly look at it and see what grabs a hold of me mm-hmm. without any influence, meaning I haven't listened to anybody else preach it or teach it, and I have read no commentaries. I don't okay. want to pollute the water in any way to begin. for yeah. what the Lord might say you need to say this about this Mm -hmm. i always have a blank yellow legal pad Mm -hmm. next to me while i read with a pen in hand Mm -hmm. as i read it along i'll write a verse and i it's just scribble it's not very organized it's like i'll I'll verse 20 and then i'll write a couple words and circle something if another scripture reference comes to mind that matches that i'll write that down real quick before you forget it right Mm -hmm. and i'll just move through the text blind Mm mm-hmm then I'll do it. Then I'll look at it a little longer and begin. You know, if I were going to preach, the, and I add some stuff on the yellow pad. Not always, but a lot of times. Then I'll start to read commentaries. I very rarely will listen to. Um, I do it, but I very rarely only because it's hard to find a real solid like take on it somewhere. I don't, mm-hmm. and then I don't really listen to a lot of people preach what I'm going to preach. I also don't want to accidentally act like them you know or yeah, say gonna, yeah, i don't want to be influenced that. like that but anyway i'll read com i read a lot of commentary about it typically mm-hmm. some of it is in book form the most of it some of it is online some of it if i don't have quite it's not quite grabbing what i feel that i don't even have either uh, there are some online resources that i'll go to by the end of it the yellow pad is massive and then i start to transfer all that information to a very concise bullet pointed message and a lot of what's on the yellow pad gets lost because it'd be an hour mm-hmm. and a half and then mm-hmm. preach that how it goes mm-hmm. tips for anybody else biggest <clears throat> tips yeah don't try to be anybody else don't mm-hmm. try to say it how somebody else <clears throat> said it don't don't get influenced too much mm-hmm. if god called you to that opportunity he called you to that opportunity mm-hmm. he didn't call you to go in and relay somebody else's study somebody else's intellect or understanding mm-hmm. you know he called you to it bible study in the jail 
a devotional, a, uh, something in your house or whatever. Just let God use you and read it and trust that the Lord, the Bible says in 1 John, we have no need that anybody teach us. We have the anointing from the Holy Spirit. Mm-hmm. Uh, the, so what it's saying is that God will reveal to you directly mm-hmm. what the truth of the Scripture is and how it relates to the opportunity you've been given. Be yourself and teach it from the heart. Like That's good. You, you need to check if you're right. Yeah. Are you doctrinally correct? But still be your own person. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. So mine's similar in the preparation thing, where I'm I'm writing things down, and I do I'll read it I'll read it first, write my things down, and I'll be like I need to you know there's certain spots where like I need to dig more into this. What is this really saying? Uh-huh. Or some I'm like I I understand where I I think I want to go here, but I do read I I read a lot. I read a lot of commentaries. I'll read a lot of sermons. I'll listen to sermons, mm-hmm. and there's no. It used to be one specific person, which I think can be dangerous. I don't want to be any person at all. So, and you say it for that reason, not because necessarily a person is dangerous, though they can be. Correct. You're saying because then you accidentally become that person. Correct. Yeah. Correct. And I and I realized that early, uh, and so I don't I don't ever stick with one person, but I'll I'll take bits <clears> and pieces and just and I don't, I do not try to make a point the same way the person made the point. It's more of just understanding. Oh yes, yes. This this is what the scripture says. Right. The hardest part, so the more I the more I do it, the more I get a little bit of a rhythm. The hardest part for me, and I think, I, I honestly, and I'm not trying to paint it, I think you're past this point. I don't even think you think about it anymore because you're so on rhythm. I'm fascinated with what you're, whatever you're going to say. Is I you, you, there's always a hundred more things to say. And the hardest part is saying, don't don't go up there and say, Six million things. Like the passage could never end. You could always do one thing. And so I, I first would think, man, what if I don't say this? Well, you can't say everything. No. I think you, you know that in your head so much so that you don't even. I mean, I know you know that, but I. So I, if this is what you're saying, then it's true. Uh, I don't know if this is exactly what you're saying. I, I, I more ends up on the cutting room floor than in the Without sermon, yeah. but I do, I think I have gotten mostly past the struggle of when you're live preaching it. I don't think I really fall off anymore oh, with yeah, all this yeah. no, information. No. I, I, I realize, like I could say, I'm not going to, and I'll yeah. even say it out loud sometimes. Like that's a sermon for another day, mm-hmm. but I'm not going to do it today. Yeah. I actually don't either live, but the reason I don't is because I literally will time my sermon. I, I turn a clock on. And I yeah. and I go through it as if I'm preaching it to people. I preach it to the walls, and mm-hmm. I literally do that. The reason I do that, not not everybody has to do that at all. The reason I do it is because of that. Because I don't want to get, I don't want to fall off or to get off of, of the point. The other reason is truthfully, I am aware that as a I'm 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 a guest speaker. I'm not the one that preaches every week, and I just know that. For me, I don't think I can go 50 minutes. I think in general, if people aren't super familiar with you, they will be checked out. Mm-hmm. Some people can do it. I know people that preach for an hour or whatever, but and if I preached every week, maybe that would change. I don't know. My goal is 35 minutes because of that. Like, I Well, think you could do it. You could. don't do it, right? Correct. You Correct. Could, I mean, yeah, we all could do it. Correct. Yeah. So I, my, my goal is hey, make, make your point in 35 minutes and, yes. and be done. And uh, be done. I have... Uh, cut back in the past couple years. I have for sure fought, you have. Yeah, like, we I, used I, to joke when we started the encore. I was yeah. like, yeah, forty six this week. But no, dude, if I if I see that thing hit forty minutes, I almost consider it a personal failure. Just because, yeah. and I'm not saying like the, the, the message was bad or people didn't listen. I I just don't. I you you need to be able to say it. And yeah. quite frankly, I like it closer to thirty. But yeah. sometimes the nature of the content is so much you you got to be faithful to it and walk through it. Um, so maybe you're 35 or so, but I, right. I, if, if it goes 40 or more, I'm mad. And it used to, I've preached 55 minute sermons years ago, but yeah. what helped me is I told those guys, like put a clock on the back wall. So I know yeah, and, that, and that, if I, without that, it's, it's hard, man. I, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. And, and my, so my only tip would be for that is know that you cannot say everything. There's no. always another sermon for another time. No. And I think we see a lot of people that are not used to it. Just oh, and another thing, and another thing, and another thing. And this and then is a good people verse. will walk, yeah. And then people will walk away not remembering anything, you know. So you try to stick. My with, wife with would call it scripture vomit. Like people yeah. just verse after verse after verse, and that sounds bad to criticize that. Like you're right. not criticizing the power of the Bible, but you actually can dilute it by giving information overload with mm-hmm. scripture after scripture. 
listen, the, yes, there are 14 verses that back up your one point. Just use one or two. You don't have to use them all. Yeah. Just use good. one or two. Yeah. Like, figure out yeah. what sharply backs that one point and move on. There's a yeah. lot we can say. That's really good. This. Yeah, really good. Because so, we wrestle it every day. I mean, we're still sharpening it. Absolutely. Absolutely. All right, let's move on. So we right. are talking about the Holy Spirit. This is where John 14 brought you this week. Now, we had just recently talked about the three persons of God, Trinity of God, but I don't know that we went that in depth with the Holy Spirit. Probably, Probably not. not with the Holy Spirit specifically. Probably not. Yeah. So let's talk about where we're at here and uh, have some questions. We'll see where it goes. Mm-hmm. Okay, so Jesus is preparing, basically, he's preparing his disciples for his departure, promises the Holy Spirit, yes. right? Yes, he does. So when he says that, he says that the Comforter will come. Where is the Holy Spirit at that moment? Yeah, so hard to say for certain. Somebody may think that they can, but the Holy Spirit is so complicated in a way because <laughs> because if the Holy yeah. Spirit is the fullness of God, then right. the Holy Spirit is everywhere present. It's omnipresent, right? Yeah. Yeah. So the Holy yeah. Spirit is there. Yeah. And Jesus makes an allusion to it in verse 17 when he says, He abides with you and will be in you. Mm-hmm. So the Holy Spirit was abiding because Jesus' baptism has already happened and the mm-hmm. Holy Spirit appeared there very specifically. Um, so the Holy Spirit is still in the Old Testament context and is abiding with the people of God mm-hmm. at times, mm-hmm. but he has not fully and permanently indwelled them. Okay. So I don't know how else to answer that, right. but he is not somewhere else having never encountered mankind. Yeah. Okay. So then explain the Old Testament, New Testament difference. Mm-hmm. So the Holy Spirit was was present. I know you talked about this in your sermon. Yeah, but it's it, it was present in Genesis one. It I, I I make the mistake of saying that you 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 should refer to the Holy Spirit as it with a personification. He. He. Yeah, it's not a thing. Yeah. It's the it's God. He's God. But it says in Genesis one, uh, the earth was formless and void, and darkness was over the surface of the deep, and the Spirit of God was moving over mm-hmm. the surface of the waters. So. The Holy Spirit is, uh, Hebrews 9.14 says, the eternal spirit has always, he has no beginning, has no end. In the Old Testament, he he was present for, he was with the people of God and empowered them to accomplish the will of God Mm -hmm. at times and in certain ways. Mm -hmm. But then at times would remove his power, Samson being a classic example of this, off of them sometimes because of sin, sometimes because the work was finished or whatever, because he did not permanently indwell them at that time. Okay. But they were believers. I want to be clear about that. And okay. they're no less believers than we are. Okay. Just interacted with God in a different way at times. Okay. Who? So we're kind of progressing here as we answer these questions. Who has the Holy Spirit now? Every believer, true believer in Jesus is indwelled with the Holy Spirit or they are not a believer. True. Okay. All right, so with that, man, we had a couple of good emailed questions in this week, so I'm going to try to hit on these, and I, I hope I got the main question. I hope I understood it right as mm-hmm. we talked about them. We had some them. good questions, so yeah. thank you for that, people. Yeah, please, thank you. please email those questions every week. So who has the Holy Spirit now? Those that believe we are sealed with the Spirit until the day of redemption. Mm-hmm. At the, at, if, we are, if we are sealed, why do many struggle with knowing that we have the Holy Spirit? I'll say it this way. Like, if the spirit of the living God is inside of me, why do I feel like a, an average Joe at times? Should that be the case? Why do we struggle with knowing that? A few reasons. One, we are distant. We could be distant from the Lord and his word and fellowship of believers. Mm-hmm. So if we are distant from the word of God, which is alive, and incidentally, this is something I cut from my message, inspired okay to be written by the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit inspired men to write, mm-hmm. uh, 2 Peter chapter 1. Um, when we are distant from the Word of God, when we are distant from the people of God, when we are lacking in prayer, we the Holy Spirit has not ceased to indwell us, but we become disconnected from his power working in our lives. Mm-hmm. We, we, we give ourselves over to the flesh more. That's why the Bible says in... 1 Thessalonians 5.19, do not quench the Holy Spirit. 
this idea of a fire being quenched by water, a wet yeah. blanket or whatever. You yeah. can do that. You mm-hmm. can, there's another passage that says, do not grieve the Holy Spirit. So if you're, in, which is another reason. So you can be distant, you can quench the Holy Spirit, but you can also grieve and quench the Holy Spirit by sinning. If yeah. you're walking a life of sin, you feel very average. It's a very comparable scenario, not one for one, but very comparable to when Samson was in sin. He was empowered by the Holy Spirit over and over and over, and the Bible says the Spirit of the Lord departed from Samson. He was left to himself, and he was overcome. Mm -hmm. It it is similar to that in the life of a believer when we quench the power of the Holy Spirit Mm -hmm. through sin or just complacency. Okay. Yeah, that's that's pretty good with that, uh, quenching the Holy Spirit. That's for sure. All right. Why... All right, this I guess this this is like the the part of part of that. Um, maybe it's kind of the same answer, but I, I want to make sure that we touch on it. So, why do we not live as if we do? Why do believers? So he, here's the thing: if we are, we have the Holy Spirit in us, and we say the fruit of the Spirit comes from the Holy Spirit, not from you or I, right? Yes, that's true. So if that's true, there's nothing that you and I can like manufacture on our own, right? But if we are Christians and have the Holy Spirit, why does that? not happen more frequently well because it talks about being led by the holy spirit in uh what romans 8 14 i believe um all who are being led by the spirit of god these are the sons or the children of god um again i you can be led by yourself your desires your will your flesh other people Mm -hmm. other people's expectations insecurities you know ambition of the world all of these things Mm -hmm. So when you are led by yourself, you get what you get. But I would so in short, I would say a little bit different th- from quenching and grieving. Okay, you are not surrendered and in touch with what it is to be led by the Spirit of the Living God. Mm-hmm. So therefore, you don't see the fruit of the Spirit, or you don't recognize it, or you don't feel the power to do it. It's not there because you are not daily in your walk with the Lord, mm. surrendered to being led by the Spirit. So you just go live your life, and uh, there is a day that was not, quite frankly, stewarded well, and that day is gone now. Yeah, yeah, that's that's good. So, you know, and the thing is, too, I think sometimes we get we get caught up in, I know there's there's so much Scripture, but it all, it all does consistently flow together. And oh, it is yeah. together. And so the, the next chapter that you come to here soon is um yeah. talks about Jesus and and the vine dresser, God the vine mm-hmm. dresser, and I'm the vine, you are the branches. And what he says is like nobody can produce fruit yep. if you're not in touch with the vine. And what he ends up That's saying good, is yeah. abide. And so I I think it's it's interesting to think because we can get so caught up in Man, I have the Holy Spirit, and I'm trying to do this. I can't. I can't keep up with all the fruits of the Spirit and do all of these things. And you use the word in touch. I think that's the, that's the same thing here. It means to to abide in Him. Well, yeah, abiding would be the better biblical term. Sure, yeah, to, and which so maybe. What, what, so, what do you think that means? If people are like, "What does that mean?" It be just, yeah. So, I, I think in, you said the word in touch. I think that's that's fine. I, you know, it's it's the fact that. It might be different for you or for me or for anybody, but we know, we know when we are connected with Him, right? You mm-hmm. have an extremely busy week at work, and you didn't talk to Aaron much this that that week or something. You feel almost a little bit of a disconnect. Oh yeah, right? sure, yeah. And you're like, ah, there's a little, little bit of a disconnect mm-hmm. there. Not that your relationship's horrible, but you just kind of got to reconnect. And so for us, we know. When we are in touch, mm-hmm. we know when we are connected, when we are abiding in Him, that might be a little bit different for you than for me. But I think there's a lot of commonalities with making sure that we're in communion with Him, you know, reading and So praying. on this, yeah, that's real good. And so then I think people may hear that, mm-hmm. and there's almost like a some unknown it's like it's some mystical experience to be in yeah, tune with yeah, the holy spirit yeah. and how do i like they got to go out in the woods and and meditate and then all of a sudden something happens and they're i don't operate like that though i think there is a place for right being alone with god there right. obviously is a place for prayer and right. meditation but meditate not meditation as the world defines it on his word so how are yeah. we abiding with him how are we connecting with the holy spirit first and foremost when you read the word of god because he inspired it to be written and because the word of god is alive you are connecting with god directly Mm -hmm. 
there's no mystic. I, I guess to give someone a practical, a practical well, how thing. do I do that? Yes. I mean, there are other things to say, but read the Bible. Mm-hmm. Read the Bible. Don't go out in the woods and shut your eyes and wait for a, a mystical breeze to come through. Oh, I think that was the Holy Spirit's coming. It's not like that. Yeah. It, it, the real connection the tr- is with the truth that the Holy Spirit himself has revealed to be written. And and the Bible talks a ton about obedience. Yes. So like faithful people, you're obedient. So you're reading to say, "Oh man, I should be doing this. I guess I never realized it." Mm-hmm. Like that that's that's how we are in touch. And yeah, I know true. we're kind of getting off on a this tangent is here, but good, yeah. But like God is a loving Father. He's not giving us rules to follow rules so right. He can slap us around. He's giving us rules because He loves us. Like we love our children and go, I don't, I don't want you to, you know, the, the old hot stove thing. I don't want you to touch the hot stove because it's going to destroy your hand. Yes, the kid sees it as a rule. So think about it. First John talks about this a ton. Like we have a loving Father who cares for us and loves us and wants us to abide in Him. And so the obedience is. He genuinely knows what's best for us yes. and knows why we would need that. So, yeah, abiding would be, yeah, that, that connection with him. But how are you going to be connected if you're not praying and if you're not in his word? It, it, you're right. It's not going to happen with that mystical no, moment. People live in a double life of sin to where yeah. they think, oh, I need to connect with God. It's Sunday, and then I'm, I'm living in immorality or I'm living in pursuit of greed. It, you're, you're going to instantly quench the holy you're not going to have so then they're the ones at times wondering i don't know why i think i'm a believer maybe you are Mm -hmm. but the life that you live is not a godly life so then you don't feel like man i don't have the power that these people are talking about that's that's really good yeah and that's that's the disconnect from monday through saturday oh and then sunday you know it's just like i'm I'm a believer here i want to reconnect for a day and then you know, shove him away for six days. Yeah, like it doesn't, yeah. It doesn't work Repent well of enough. nothing. Don't obey. You just hear what's true. Right. And that does do something. That shakes you to hear the truth. You're connected with fellowship of the body. You're you're encouraged in worship. So you do feel something. Mm-hmm. But if you don't obey the word that was spoken to your heart and you walk out the door, it instantly begins to grieve the Holy Spirit. Yeah. And you don't have the power that you're looking for. You, you yeah. Really yeah. And we've said this before, but uh, it's weekend services... Those are just like those are just rallies. It's of, a quick rah rah yeah, session. Let's it's get a together to remind yes. us what do the rest what the rest of my week needs to look yes. like. Yes, that's that's what it is. So to rally, you're right. Yeah. It's a rally. Church happens all week long. Church happens right. in right. twos and threes and tables and kitchens. And Absolutely. Classrooms and you know restaurants and stuff like that's where church happens. It's yeah. not that Sunday isn't, <clears throat> but you're right. That's a rally of mm-hmm. all the troops. That that's the a general speaking to the army yep. and and yep. giving them the fire up marching orders from the lord and then go out and, and go. that's where church go. really happens yeah. and if that doesn't happen for you you're quite frankly you're not in church you're yeah. not in fellowship with the body yeah good stuff all right another emailed question that came in this is this is a really good one um so the super spiritual guy the guy that is walking in the okay. spirit things are going well he he you are seeing you are seeing the empowerment of the Holy Spirit. You are seeing God do a work. How do you then keep your ego in check? How is it where you go, man, this is pretty cool. Maybe there's something special about me. Dude, that's a great... That's a really good question. Whoever asked that is really asking good a good question. So I have this Bible here, which is... I always order the same Bible for like... So you know where the verse is? Decades, right? dude. Yeah, yeah. Is that the reason? Oh, yeah. For so sure. you can so mentally go, yes. So I, I have literally yeah. five of these. So I ordered two more, and I have one that'll sit on a box, in a box on a shelf. Like for same years. cover, or you just mean. No, no, no. No, no. This is the exact same exact. Bible. Oh, okay. exactly. The okay. literal words are in the same spot on the same page. All right. Exactly. All right. Um, so maybe that's a tip for somebody, or maybe somebody thinks that's dumb. It's what I do. One, because I'm a preacher and I need to. I just need Refrain, to. You know, yeah, and, go and, back. And my yeah, mind yeah, yeah, yeah. has memorized position on the page in some yep. way. Anyway, that's too long to talk about. But anyway, I just found it. So I was looking for something that is highlighted in a different Bible, but not in this one. <laughs> Acts chapter 12. So the question is, if, if you know God is using you or whatever, yeah. uh, how do you keep your ego in check? Well, sometimes you don't, and you can pay a dear price for it. Now, this guy's not a believer, but this is something interesting. Um, on the appointed day... Herod, having put on his royal apparel, took his seat on the rostrum and began delivering an address to them. 
So I think of this often as a preacher because people say very encouraging things to me, which I appreciate and yeah. often need yeah. to keep my spirits lifted among much discouragement at times. Um, but they are saying it in response to the power of God working, not my own ability, and mm -hmm. I need to remember that. But um, anyway, he gave an address, and he says, it says, the people kept crying out, the voice of a God and not of a man. They're crying out to Herod. This is not a man. Voice of a God, not of a man. Immediately an angel of the Lord struck him because he did not give the glory. Give God the glory, it says. And he was eaten by worms and died. I remember that often <laughs> uh, because... So the, the, the short answer... You better be giving God the glory for mm -hmm. everything, everything in your life. God works in your marriage. You have a great marriage. You better truly realize that that was not because of your effort and hard work. It might be in a fruit of your obedience, but even the obedience was to the word of God. And had yeah. not had yeah. God not given you his word, you wouldn't know what to have been obedient to. Yeah. So it still goes to God. Yeah, You know, and just... The miraculous favor of the Lord. If you have a good family, if you're good at your job, if you're good at the ministry God has called you to, and the Lord uses you, you better give God all the glory. There's another example. King Nebuchadnezzar turned into an insane, humiliated state of being when he was king of Babylon, and the reason given is because he did not recognize that it was heaven that rules. So I often read... So I and guess... He did, he did later. He did later. Yeah, pretty cool. He yeah. did later. Yes, he did. It's a great story. So I guess how? How practical? I read stories that scare me. Mm. I, re I remind myself often of when people didn't give God the glory, the consequence that comes with that, because yeah. it will come to me too, and it will come to you. Yeah. And not everybody does. And there are times in my life, other times in our lives, where we, we take the glory for what God has done, and you're going to pay a price for it. You're going to get humbled and reminded right. that it wasn't you, it was God. I don't like that feeling, so I I, I try to purposely alarm myself yeah. with the Bible sometimes yeah. and just remember, yeah. thank you, Lord. Yeah, so you that that is your way of re that's be, my like way. a reminder. Everybody needs that reminder. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and man, I don't. I mean, I I, I don't know. Like I. There's, I have so many things that you're just like, holy cow, <laughs> just like everyday life shortcomings. Just, you're saying, just shortcomings. Yeah, you realize like, your own. Oh my goodness, like there's, there's, there's nothing I can do. You know, John fifteen, five six. Apart from me, you can do nothing. Like I'm, nothing. I'm reminded by that. I, I don't know if I got that verse right. It's, it's in that chapter. But all right, anywho, we got a couple minutes left. What did you cut out of that bad boy? I cut out. A lot about the Holy Spirit inspiring the Word of God to be written okay. and how that works and applies to our life. And I really liked it, too. I realized it was a sermon unto itself. Oh, okay. okay. I really liked it. I also cut out this weekend sermon. Well, I was going to ask you that next. I, I, I wanted... Yeah, I was going to... mentioned... Blasphemy of the Holy Spirit. Okay. And the reason I think I... I, I I really feel compelled to preach it. It's a question we have faced for years, mm -hmm. and it seems to be very few people have it right, the mm -hmm. answer, because everyone kind of knows this peripheral thing. There is an un, something we call the unpardonable the sin. Unpardonable so sin, people yeah. ask like it's a mystery that can never be solved. They've asked me many times. They're like, what do you think the unpardonable sin is? As if no one can know, but we can all guess. It's very specific. It's quite easy, frankly, to understand when we look in the Bible, and it mm -hmm. is clear. And so I feel like it's important to do that. And the unpardonable sin is blasphemy of the Holy Spirit. But what is that and who's what does done that it? mean? Yeah, yeah. And, and it, can it be done now and right. all that? So I cut right. all that Whoa. and I cut a lot about the Word of God and, you know. You cut out the Word of God in this? I, I cut the Word yeah. of God out. I just gave my own, my own words. <laughs> <laughs> no, I did Yeah, I was going to say a lot about how the Bible came to be and it, it turned into a monster that was really cool but like I, I, I it wasn't this it wasn't the point of the message okay so the unpardonable sin is that the main the main drive this week yeah this... I think I literally I don't know what I'll, I don't know if I'll call the message unpardonable or uh -huh. if I'll call it unforgivable but uh -huh. I, I'm gonna say something to cater to the understanding oh he's talking about the unpardonable sin That's I, good I'll listen to this all right well very cool we look forward to that so thanks for hanging out with us today man we mentioned it a lot in this of of our ideas and things like that, but making sure that the connection with God comes from comes from communication, communion with Him.
being in the word. So don't take our word for it being his this week. And we'll see you next time when we talk about the unpardonable sin.